Alright guys, here we are. Um, obviously seen the rift build that I've done. I've done three or four bashes now. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable to give my opinions on the car, what I think. A few things that maybe could be improved slightly upon the car, but overall the rift here, absolutely love it. It gets a big thumbs up for me. Um, superb. Building it was was brilliant. It was the instructions were pretty good, really enjoyable, and it was just satisfying. But I personally like builds over RTR as much as I normally buy RTRs. There's not really been a kit like this that sort of struck my interest for a long, long time. But the video I've got, um, I've got a bash at the end of this to show you. Is so if you want to skip all the review side, I'll put the time up on the screen just now and you can go ahead to that, but it's all been on 3S, because I tried the car on 4S, insane, too much power, you can't put it down on hills, because I mean, rock bouncing, hill climbing, you want lots of power, but you don't want it to the point where if the car's at any angle, it's just back flipping. I mean, I was doing standing back flips in my garden on the ground with a 4S battery. I, I tried 2S out of curiosity, that was okay, but I'm not going to lie, it was a bit boring. Um, the 3S is exactly where I think the car should be, it just behaves so well and looks so scale with 3S power and that's where I'm going to keep this car running. Um, not really anything else to say other than what I'm going to go through on the video, but overall if you're looking for a kit, you want something different, I'm, I would recommend this all the way. I mean, I've done the instructions exactly as it said, Loctited everything where it should be, it's got the million weight oil, front back and I've got the spool inside it. Um, four, three, four runs in now, no issues whatsoever, no screws have came loose, everything sounding as sweet as when I first got it. If anything, I don't know if it's because it's a kit version or because I've greased it up well, I think this car sounds so much quieter than a lot of the cars that I've like watched on, on you, other YouTube videos. They sound really sort of like clunky and like coggy but I'm not getting any of this. I think that 1900 kV motor really really is the sweet spot for the car but we'll get more and more videos on the Rift as we go along. I'm going to do a pro hopefully tomorrow I'm going to get out and I'm going to do a real proper movie styled one with some on board. Now I found the location you'll see in the video at the end. It's really just a perfect spot for the car. But um, yeah enough talking about general things just now. We'll move on to reviewing the car and I'll have the bash at the end but if you do like this content please leave me a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed I'd really appreciate that and yeah after this we'll be back again with something soon so always lots of things on the go here I've got a couple of other things that I'm doing in the corner there so hopefully once that's all finished we'll have a lot more stuff on the channel just to keep the content rotate in all different kinds of cars and not keep it stale so yeah here we go on with the review so first thing we've been a rock bouncer, one of the most important things are tyres and suspension. And that's one thing I say Axel's got great. I mean these tyres, nice and soft, but not not to the point where they're just floppy. They've got a good bit of grip. Traction, I can't complain at all. Suspension and shocks are amazing. Um, the car just moves so well. The only thing that I might change, um, this is one of my sort of minor things, is I've got all the suspension at stock points and settings, so I'll try and get the camera better to show you, but for example what I'm going to try next is the suspension links are preset at the back, that's what it says in the book, I'm going to put them to the front and round here we've got the suspension towers at the top, I'm going to put them to the forward position too. So that might just lower the car, hopefully maybe about an inch or something, I think that'll give it a bit more stability when it's in steep angled hills, because you'll see I've had a couple of tumbles on it, it's Look, at, to be fair, it's how I like it to look. It looks used and like a rock bouncer should. It's not a shelf piece. But um, I did find that with it being a little bit higher centre of gravity, I did have a few flips that I think if I'd lowered the car down a little bit, we wouldn't have any issue with that. But um, durability wise, uh, all the links, everything are holding up great. Obviously, I've got the braces that you get with the kit on the rear arms, um, the sway bars, no complaints, nothing's broke, no gears sound rough. Um, everything's just just spot on. So as a build overall, it was a lot of fun. Can't really complain of anything. It did say in the booklet, which I'll try and show you just now, which I thought was a bit odd. Here it is here. So obviously in the two-speed box you have to put a micro servo in. 
and here it's got <coughs> only used the Spectrum SX107 servo which I've no idea what that is and no interest to find out but like I showed you when I built the car and here, I don't know if I can get a good view to show you it's quite tucked away but I've just got a random little aeroplane micro servo in here cheap as chips, little plastic servo and because the gearbox is so smooth and everything's greased up it's changing gear no problem so I don't know why they've got must be their servo so if you're building the car yourself I would just say ignore that crap um, that's something that <laughs> they're just trying to sell their own parts in my opinion I don't see any problem with that um, the other thing that I'd heard people saying about was the axial steering servo they're saying two or three runs and it would kind of wear out well I've not had any issues with that so far and I quite like it I was going to take it off and have a direct drive for the servo just with a, with a horn here I thought maybe the steering would be a bit more responsive but I find it tightened down enough I've got not, not zero basically the best way to say it zero issues with the steering since the last time you've seen the build though I've got a Savox in there because the servo had before first run it started glitching and um, I think it's been lying in the drawer for a while so it's either took a knock which has damaged some internals yet or it was just a servo on the way out so that's the Savox in there now I've also got a I think this is a 25 kilogram Savox and I've got a 25 kilogram Power HD ordered as well so I might stick that in see if there's a difference or just keep that until it breaks but I'm pretty happy with that um, on the servo front as I had lying on my drawers a little sort of 70-75 bash guard for a servo I don't even know what car it was off I just remembered I had it lying about but um, I've put that underneath there just to protect the servo plus it just looks cool so the little extra bits you get make all the difference so um, yeah no complaints, you can see the bottom for the rock bouncing bashing's not really touched anything I'm going to get metal plate on the bottom just for the look more than anything so when you see it up in the air in videos it'll just look a bit more scale with the sort of metal skid plates drivetrain wise no issues, um, plastic shafts on these but they're, they're more than strong enough and yeah everything's brilliant the only thing that I don't like which I'll show you just now, this is probably the biggest thing, it's a little bit annoying with the car not that it's major work but I'll put this camera down for a second and I'll show you just now yeah that's the bonnet up there now so you can see I need to give this a good clean which I'm going to do after this video but to get to your receiver box is a bit of a pain, you can't just get to it for the battery tray so you've got to take the screws off at the sides here and um, basically just lift up the body and drop it down and you can kind of find a way to get it out so the only time you really need to get in there is like for example when my servo just went there so what I've done is when I put the Savox in I've put a little extension lead here so if my servo ever goes again I can just unplug it for here don't need to get in the receiver box and switch my servo so that's um, something I'd recommend if you're doing the build is get a couple of connectors on the outside of your receiver box it'll just make things a little bit easier for you but overall yeah Axial Rift or RBX10 whatever you want to call it huge thumbs up for me, I absolutely love this thing so much fun, different style of RC um, I might try it with the sway bar off as well like the RTR version is see what that's like off road but yeah I'm loving that, everything's good probably going to get a couple of Vitabon bits over time for it and just kind of do this car up um, I've still got the body to paint for the inside here but at the same time I might not even bother, I might just leave it just cage only because I actually don't think it takes away from the look possibly put a wee figure in there or something like that so it's got a driver but yeah I'm more than happy with the car so anyway like I say everything I've got to say about this car is positive um, I'm going to do another few videos with it um, I've got a few plans now I've found in this area you'll see in the video I'm going to put up for you just now so I'm going to leave you guys just now with a bash video this morning and yeah Axial Rift absolutely fantastic RC, super impressed and over time I'm just going to add more and more bits to this car and just make it something a bit unique so that's me out, enjoy the video, hope you enjoy this bash and yeah please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you've not and I'll catch you guys in the next one Paul out, bye